This is the Five Point Play Podcast, the Die Hard Duke Basketball Fans Podcast. Not the result we were looking for, but that's the result we got. Um, the NC State Wolfpack, man, um, give credit where it's due. They're on just a historic run uh, right now. You can call it uh, great ball. You can call it luck. You can call it whatever you want. But the fact remains true that they continue to win. So, um they're moving on to Phoenix, and unfortunately, we uh, we headed home. And um, can I say one thing? TK? Yeah. I'm sorry for interrupting. Yeah. I don't think it's luck anymore. You don't win 11, 12 games in a row beating that caliber of opponent on a on a luck streak. Uh, you might win the the old school <clears throat> ACC tournament or the Dixie Classic off luck, where you have to win win two games, three games, but you're not running through that ACC tournament, running through the NCAA tournament on luck. This team clearly belongs to be where they're at. They looked more comfortable than Duke, and I'm sure we'll get into that in the pod. But, yeah, I just want to say I don't think it's luck anymore. This is just fate, destiny. I don't know what it is. Whatever whatever words you want to use, um, you know, we'll certainly get into it. It, It's it's certainly something. Um, You definitely, I mean, look, any any team that, um, makes a, a run like that. You, you do have to have some luck going away. That's they have every championship, but uh, they, they've <laughs> they've had quite a bit. Um, you know, you can go back to the the NC State Virginia game, where you know everybody remembers that McConnell hits that three, but UVA had three fouls to give. Like they should never have been allowed them to shoot that three. And mm-hmm. if that doesn't, if, if UVA is just not stupid. Then, they make one of those free throws. If they make one free throw, right? But one hit one free, like, it's just, but if Mar- McConnell hits that three, that was Mar- Marquette just shooting horrifically, us shooting horrifically, um, us playing horribly, uh, in the ACC. Like, there's a lot of things that got to go your way, and obviously, you make your own luck in many ways. So, I don't want to discredit anything that they do, but um, you know, certainly, you know, they they earned it, they certainly earned it against Duke, uh, in the Elite Eight. You know, Duke got to the lead eight by really grinding it out against Houston. I wanted to kind of start there, talk about that game, talk about the NC State game. And then we'll talk about, you know, Duke's future, and we'll talk about, um, you know, kind of our season in review, you know, just kind of holistically, you know, what we all thought coming into the year obviously didn't pan out. But at the end of the day, we're fans, and, and you know, we're not always going to get things right, but we'll, we'll try to um, – do our best there, but AC, um, you know, the Houston game to me was one where we got punched in the mouth Mm -hmm. and in previous iterations of this particular team, that may have been enough to, to do them in and it would have been a long 40 minutes, but they punched back and John Shire made some great adjustments in that game. And I think that's one of the reasons that it's so disappointing to see what, you know, kind of happened two days later. Because, you know, Duke showed a, a hell of a lot of resolve. Mm-hmm. And our backcourt was fantastic. Um, Philip Powell, he was tough. Ryan Young played fantastic. And, you know, just there was so many positives going into Sunday. Um, just, you know, for what, what they did and, and how they responded against Houston. Yeah, no, absolutely. The, the team played well. The team... They got a big win against Houston, obviously. And that's one of the games, like you said, that's, that's one of the times that this team in the past... I at least last year would have would have crumbled or whatever, but this year you've seen all season again every loss within single digits except for this last one. This team fought all year and they were in the game all year, so that shows a couple of things, right? That shows that shows the talent the talent portion of it all, right? Like we're talented enough and we fight hard enough to stay in any game that we're in, but then the youth part plays that that plays a part, like the the consistency. Like if we're losing by one or two baskets a game, then you know I mean sometimes experience gets that extra one or two baskets just because you're bigger, stronger, more experienced, know where the ball is going to bounce, all those types of things. So I think that's what we kind of ran into this year. Like, let's remember, these are sophomores, majority. These are sophomores that are playing on this team, not seniors. We're treating them like seniors, treating them and, and comparing them against four-year players just because they have an extra star beside their name out of high school. It's not the case, man. Once you get to that coll- collegiate level, all those stars, all that stuff, all those McDonald's, all American games don't mean anything. So – like let's let's stop the BS about uh, Duke has all these stars. Why can't we go any further? Like this is the Elite Eight. We're talking about a couple of possessions away from being in a Final Four. Like when did one game, one game between this game and then the other game? It's like you get to the Elite Eight. Oh well, the program's in trouble. You get to the Final Four. Oh, the program's doing great. Like stop. 
like we're doing all right. Like John's doing great. Like we fought, we did our thing against Houston, and then we lost against NC State. It is what it is. Yeah, we, we were. I mean, yeah, we we were twenty. D, I'll get to you in a second. I want to bring Jack right. in. Um, you know, we were you know twenty minutes away. You know, we were up six. We played horrible mm-hmm. in the first half. We probably had the opportunities there to put them away in that first half, and and we just didn't didn't take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. But, we were, but the, at the end of the day, we were twenty minutes away from going to the Final Four in John's second year. So yep. all, all these fans out there that are, you know, calling for his job or calling for his head and um, saying it just never would have happened, you know. In the hot, the warm seat. I've seen the warm seat, the not warm. the hot seat yet. The warm it's seat. The warm it, seat. The warm seat. Fans. Those aren't They're fans. Not fans. Like They're not fans. They're not fans. <laughs> but, you know, Jack, you know, the reason I kind of pose this to you is that, you know, you run the biggest, you know, Duke fan account on Instagram on the I, I agree with you. Those aren't real fans, but kind of talk about it. You know, settle settle people down. If the ball is properly inflated, Duke's probably going to Phoenix. Tell him, tell him. Like it happened to every team. State just happens to play more of an interior game. Tom Brady was filling up the balls. Hey yo! If Brady was filling up, <laughs> if Brady was inflating them, they wouldn't. They wouldn't have been inflated enough. You know that. But, look, Duke's fine. Ron Shire, uh, he got an extension before this season. He's going to be a Duke for a while. So I want to hear it. Good. I want to hear it. John is the guy, whether you like it or not. Uh, Coach K likes it. It was his decision. Mm-hmm. More than anyone, he was the guy who helped pick his successor. If you don't rock with K, you don't rock with us. Even even after K's retirement, if you don't rock with K, you don't rock with us. And John's K's guy. I I believe in him. Uh, look at look at who's coming in next year. That doesn't happen without John. You tell me you would rather not have Cooper Flag, Kamon Maluak, like Isaiah Evans, Darren Harris, Con Kinepel, Pat and Gongba. Come on, I don't think anybody's saying that. <clears throat> but like, kind of what you don't get that without John. Saying. Well, I understand, but like AC was saying, basketball-minded people understand that, yes, this is a very talented team with multiple NBA players on it. Um, great, great talent. Easily the most talented team if, you're, if, we're, if we're talking about X's and O's, numbers, whatever metric stat you want to use. Yes, John assembled a great team. But a basketball-minded person can say, all right, but one game, anybody's got a chance. This is the NCAA. That's – you, got, are you yeah, do you guys want to tell me they can – like, I agree with you so much, D, on that point. Like, you you want to tell me that UMBC was a better team than UVA? Fairly Dickinson okay. was a better team than Purdue? You tell yeah. me Florida Gulf but, Coast was one of the best 16 teams in the country in 2013? Come on, guys. But – it's it's hard to have a conversation with a non-basketball minded person when all they see is the stars beside a player's name. They they hear, oh, you're a five-star recruiter, you got the best recruiting class, you're an NBA player. Well, now you now I can't have a basketball conversation with you if you're not talking about basketball. You're 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 talking about what the media has projected somebody to be, and they're likely right, but we're not talking basketball anymore. Now, now we might as well not even play the game. We we could have rolled dice. Uh, we, we could have drawn cards because you're just using numbers. Yeah, it's, it's a lazy argument, right? It's a, it's it a lazy is. argument that, you know, you hear all over social media. You hear it um, with people that just don't have the, the basketball intelligence. And it, it, I, I try not to even engage in those because it's, it's not worth their time. Um, but the fact is, AC, you pointed out, right? Like, yeah, we were young. Uh, you know, is that an excuse? You can say that it's an excuse. At the end of the day, you still gotta win, but you know it's not a it's not a it's not a seven game series. It's not a five game series. Hell, it's not even a three game series. It's one game, mm. and you know we won the first twenty minutes, and we lost the second one by more than we won the first twenty minutes. Like mm-hmm. shit happens. Like we played like shit. We played like shit. That's why we lost. Like we'll break it all down, but like it's a one game. It's a one and done scenario. That's why it hurts so bad. You know, all these guys, they want it. You, know, you saw Jerry McCain after the game. He's hurting. You know, those guys are hurting. 
But but Jackie is right about one thing. You do want those guys on your team. Every coach in the oh, country yeah. goes out and recruits those same kids. So oh, the yeah. fact that John is like, all right, ink your name on this. You can come to Durham is very impressive. Yeah, I, I don't even, I don't think John's job is a discussion. Like it's not even no. a discussion. Like, no. <laughs> you you haven't seen my Instagram comments then. Oh no, no, I know where on social media it is. I'm just saying it's not even a discussion. Like that's not a, that's not a thing. No, Nina Kane has all the confidence in the world in John and the, yeah. the people that are making the decisions. They have all the confidence in the world in John and as they should. Uh, Coach P, uh, well, get in here. Talk, talk some <laughs> sense to, to what happened, though, um, you know, in that second half and pretty much really the, the whole game from an offensive perspective because that's really we – were, we were pretty much inept offensively um, against NC State. What did you see that, that happened there? Uh, so, I mean, I think it just started to snowball just as far as like the momentum wise, like with, with some stupid ass, stupid fouls, uh, you know, NC state, they just made a couple shots. They just built their confidence up and then they just kind of, you know, punched Duke and Duke just didn't punch back. That's all it came down to because in the first half, you know what I'm saying? Like we said, we didn't play good on the offensive end, but we played damn good on the defensive end, you know? Um, and we were able to stop a lot of things that they like to do. And they just came out in the second half and they just capitalized on, you know, their, their game plan. And, mm. and and it's just basically, you know, if they can get flip and foul trouble, you know, we'll be in trouble. And and it worked, you know what I mean? So they went to DJ Burns. They knew that he was a mismatch. Um, they just took advantage of the way we were guarding him. Like, you know, sometimes we would double, sometimes we wouldn't. And, you know, they just they just played a good game. I mean, they didn't they didn't seem to you know, too phased or too, you know, knocked back on their heels with anything we were doing in the second half. And um, it just worked, man. So, you know, they won the game. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Bottom line, I knew I knew we were in trouble when they punched us in the mouth and we didn't punch back. I yeah. knew that mm -hmm. we were in trouble. I said, if you see some of the messages that the people who I talked to, you'd be like, yeah, they calling this shit right. Because I, I knew what it was. It's the same thing happened pretty much in the, in the, what, the, the, the second game that we played them. Uh, it was like almost the same thing, man. They yeah. punched us and we didn't punch back. And I was just mm -hmm. like, okay, dude. And we had too many people having bad games. We at the wrong time. Yeah. You know, so that's this it, man. Any shot, but the, the shots just weren't going down. Two man. point shot. They were again, open. Man. They were there. You know, yeah. That's a fact. And then, the, and so the, I'll just speak on, on like the John Shire thing. Like you said, TK, I mean, honestly, I don't even engage in that kind of conversation when I talk to people about John Shire's job. His job is probably the most secure job in America mm -hmm. in college basketball. So I don't even I don't even entertain that shit when I hear stuff like that. I just be like, I didn't even know it was a thing. Sometimes I think sometimes I even ask you guys, people are people are asking for his job because I don't even pay attention to it. You know what I mean? Because I know it's just it's just crazy to say at this point, you know. So whatever. Yeah. Uh, people are crazy. People are crazy. Um AC, one thing I I kind of started, and I'm sure I said this during the game chat, but I thought that. Uh, especially in that second half, that NC State was playing to win the game and Duke was playing mm -hmm. not to lose, and sure. that, it, it, that to me is a is a is a mental thing. And if I was if I was Keith in that locker room at halftime, that would have been the easiest conversation. I would have been like, "You guys can't play any worse. We're still in this thing. You got nothing to lose. Nobody picked you to win this anyway. So just go out there and leave it all on the field." Whereas you know Duke, you're probably having a different conversation to have. Where you're saying, well, you're up. We're not playing well. They're going to come out like gangbusters, and we're going to have to respond. And we just did it. And a lot of that is obviously we didn't make any shots. You know, we, and, we didn't make any shots. And, and, and right. And it's been the mental, like, that's kind of been the mental makeup of this team all season was yeah. never really the team. We're always a team that's going to be in it, but we were never really the team to dictate it. Like, it happens sometimes, but it didn't happen consistently. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that one of the strengths of this team through at least the middle of the season was was two point shot making. I thought that was really big. And then we didn't see any of that in that second half against state. And that's the biggest thing, man. Like threes are nice, but when you have a lead, you just you can bury a team just by making twos, man. And you saw the difference for state. It wasn't a bunch of threes for them. Like they hit some opportunistic threes, but it was really like the DJ Burns points and it was getting to the horn DJ Horn getting to the rack. So yeah, I mean they they beat us in that department. Like Roach he, you know, he, he had a bad game, didn't play well at all, was trying. He was at least trying. But, I mean, he was the only guard that was really consistently trying to make the rim. Like, McCain did it a few times, and he was successful with it. 
Tyrese never tried at all. Like it was. I want like, to. That was I want to. I want to stop you right there on that Tyrese point because I thought that the bit one of the biggest plays of the game was his third drive. He had dr- he had driven twice, mm-hmm. missed both. They mm-hmm. were contested. Okay, I probably probably should have made at least one of them. The third one, he gets called for a travel because he stops himself, and that was probably the easiest lane that he actually had to yeah. go up there and and lay it in. And I think that that for him probably just completely took him out of the game mentally because he has zero confidence in anything he was throwing up there at that point. Sure. Like his his three, he was in for five. Everything was in for nine for the mm-hmm. game. He was in for five from three. Those three is more never close. You know, it's one thing if you're yeah. just you know you're rimming out. Like, just sitting on the bench for. 14 minutes of that first half killed him, yeah. too. Yeah. <clears throat> just it doesn't took, help. I, I mean, it doesn't help. But I mean, when we talk about him supposed to be in one of our best players, man, like, no, I get it. Find a way I, to get I, I heard, back into some, it. Um, I think we somebody posted it on our private chat where he, he was, uh, quote unquote sick. He supposedly was had not been feeling well all week. Whether, whether or not that's true or not, you know, that that could be some reason for the, the long sit, but. When Proctor doesn't see the ball go down early, uh, the the first Duke possession, Proctor shot a three, and it clanked off the front of the rim. And I said, "Oh shit! Oh shit! Here we go." Shot another one, same thing. When Proctor doesn't see the ball go down, when he can't get to the rim easily, or he thinks he can't, because I I I think he could have <clears throat> had he just done it. It's it's never good for Proctor, so he's going to have to do some mental homework over the off season, in my opinion. And I mean, if we're going to be honest as a podcast, which we like to do, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 14 yeah. minutes left in that second half. I don't think e- either of the five of us thought we were winning that game. No. That, that, game minutes, was yeah, that, was, that was when, yeah, when, when things started going up. Yeah. He finally called a timeout. Duke down to, nope, we're cooked. We're cooked. They did. Mm-hmm. State looked more comfortable. State looked like they were supposed to be there. Duke was flustered. They were out of sorts. Nobody was going to admit that this game was over with 14 minutes to go in the second half, but that game was done. Mm-hmm. That game was done. Yeah, yeah the McConnell three, um, and then the Mark Mitchell foul, and they get the ball back, and then the th- th- Which didn't make any sense, but... No, it didn't make a whole lot of okay. sense. I mean, but, you know, they're... they're when stuff like that start start starting to happen, to your point, mm-hmm. the game was over. The game was over, and we yep. had nothing. It, it would have taken like a monumental um, turnaround for mm-hmm. us, you know, where the only player that actually made a single three was Jared McCain. Roach would have had to hit a couple, and then Proctor would have had to see one or two go down. It just didn't happen. And if, if game, you'd have told me that McCain had a thirty piece. In the Elite Eight game, I would have been like, "Damn, how how bad did Duke put it on him, man? How much should we win by? Yeah, twenty five, thirty, but it just simply wasn't the case, man. And state, to, like, state didn't do anything like extra, really. To be fair, no, no, but they, they didn't I mean, do anything they, wrong either. That was the other part. No, they didn't. But I mean, that's what you expect out of an Elite Eight team. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, you. Uh, the first few possessions for Duke were turning the ball over. Like this isn't good. Yeah, yeah. it was. Yeah. It, it was. Yeah, as it, ba- it, it, it was, it was as bad as I could. It, it, it could have gotten, and I thought we got that out of our system against Houston. I'll say yeah. that, and then that, I'll, I'll, we'll move. Yeah, on. no, I, I agree with you. I think that you're you're spot on, and and Jack, I don't know how you feel, but like I thought that, you know, in in the games that we lost this year, you know, usually it came down to turnovers, poor execution, and, you know, the mental toughness that you need and, and pretty much all that reared its ugly head um, in this game, especially in the second half. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie. It's, it's not really much more to it. Undisciplined play, poor play, like, bareheaded, like, their head's the wrong word. Like, spaced out. It felt like they were playing a little spaced out. It was... 
Yeah, let's let's it move was on. Honestly, to just <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was yeah, the most depressing fun. podcast ever. Look, yeah, I mean, I think it's not fun. fun. <laughs> they weren't having fun. They you lost the game. See, next, play. Play. next play. You can see how I feel just by the way I'm talking. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, I, I think that we'll wrap this up and we'll talk about uh, the season in review. Um, you know, we said the, the the kind of the comical part is that the podcast before. You know, we were talking about Jeremy McCain and, and the, the shooting performance that he had against JNU putting up 32. Um, and like if we're not going to ask him to have to do that. But if he does, okay, great. Then we'll win. Uh, it's ironic that it, it actually does happen and we lose. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a little bit comical, not, you know, not in our favor, but um, that is what it is. But, yeah, like, overall. Your season, elbow you know, comical. Like, I don't know how funny <laughs> it actually is, but. Yeah, I mean. I get your you point. Know, yeah, so, um, but the season overall, uh, obviously, you know, this one stings, and I think that, you know, expectations are what they are. Um, they're always going to be high at Duke, and, and this season was no different. And obviously, you know, we came in ranked, you know, preseason two, you know, three, and expectations were high. They were high that we would, that we would get there. I mean, a lead eight is nothing to sneeze at, but, um, you know, we didn't win the ACC regular season. We got bounced in the ACC tournament. Um, so that was tough, man. Like AC, you know, kind of put your your honest spin on it. I thought it was a good season. I thought, obviously, if you base it on preseason expectation only, then yeah, it was a failure. But again, we won five championships in 118 seasons, like four percent of the time. Stop! Like we can't do that. We can't say that the championship is the only way to measure a good season or not. So I thought, with obviously, John was trying to try to address some things. He tried to address the interior scoring. He tried to address you know, some veteran guard play type stuff when he tried to get, you know, not tried to get, but we did at least talk to Nigel Pack and Baylor Shireman before the season before we tried to get a center, a couple of centers this time around. So, I mean, he, he gave it, he gave it his best shot and it didn't work out. And you see how he constructed the following roster with common Malo watch and, and Cooper and those guys, like he's, he's obviously getting what he wanted out of this team. So I think with what we had and the limitations that this team had, I thought John did a very good job. I think you couldn't have expected some of the, some of the things that happened throughout the season in terms of, you know, the team not performing in certain ways and injuries and things, those are things you can't expect. But I thought we at least constructed a good enough roster to to man through some of those things. And we did. I mean, we did man through it. And we was a 27 and nine or something was the yeah. way we finished the season. Yeah. Like second year in a row. And, and getting into an elite eight, I don't see how this is a bad season. Yeah, yeah. go ahead, Jeff. <clears throat> this was the second year in a row. Uh, Duke was 27 and nine. And look, yeah, obviously, like AC said, preseason, this was not ideal. Um, you know, I was a team with championship aspirations, which, okay, didn't get there. Neither will 362 or 361. I don't remember how many teams there are in D1. Other teams do got to the Elite Eight. Like, if you ask me after the like Arkansas first Georgia Tech game, where's this team going to end their season? I would have said maybe the Sweet 16, probably not out of the first weekend. They were a little bit of sloppy play in the second half from going to Phoenix, and that is incredibly impressive. Mm -hmm. From when Tyrese got injured in December, in early December to now, this is a resounding success of a season. I'm not going to lie. Like this team went as far as Zion. This team went as far as Marvin Bagley. This team went as far as Seth Curry and Mason Plumley. Like this, this team did a really good job. And especially given all the crap that they went through during yeah. the year, like props to them. They, they really do deserve support round of applause. Like we're going to look back in a few years on this team and I think we're going to look positively on them. I think John learned a lot this year. I, think I also look back with that. as fans, we're going to look back and be like, damn, that year right there, John learned how to do some shit. This team came that out in so is, many different ways, but they played yeah. so many different formulas. They did so much different stuff on both sides of the ball, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that they didn't expect to have to do. Like mm-hmm. you said, AC, they, they wanted a, a, a big center. They wanted a, a – an inside score, a rim protector. They didn't get it. So then John had to go to work with that in the offseason. Yep. Foster gets hurt. Roach is hurt. 
with Kane or um, Proctor is hurt. I mean, I, I mean, like th this is, and we only have two seasons. And I know people want him fired or whatever, but out of the two seasons, this is probably the most impressive coaching job I've seen. Like mm -hmm. this is <laughs> great point, by the way, Jack. I, honestly, if I'm being honest with with this squad, I didn't think they'd make it to the Elite Eight. I would never say that. Right. I would never. I would never write it down in ink. But I didn't think so. I think. I think it's hard um, to, you know, sit there and, and say that we. I mean, I can only speak for myself that I honestly expected this. I said as much after the ACC tournament loss, where, you know, if you have to have that players only meeting, shit probably ain't right. Um, but they were able to galvanize the team. They played hard. They got punched in the mouth against Houston. They punched back. Obviously, it was a disappointing um, finish there. But all the things that John Shire did throughout the, the year, both of his, you know, the one consistent thing that happened both his first year and his second year is the team got better as the year went on. And for all the Duke fans that, you know, were always saying we peaked in November and December, now we're, we're starting to peak later on, you know, in late January, early February, and, and that doesn't mean you're always going to win every one of those games, but it, we, we did improve. And, and so, Pablo, I want to let you have the final word on kind of your overall thoughts on, on the season. Yeah, I mean, shit. To be honest with you, I, I thought it was a great season. If somebody say otherwise, I would say you probably need to be drug tested, you know what I'm saying, on the real, because it's just like at the end of the day, um, <laughs> you know, our guys, they went through a lot, you know what I'm saying, but every team goes through a lot, and the bar is different at Duke, so, you know what I mean? Honestly, it's only like, good point. you really think about it, it's only two colleges, you know what I'm saying, that really get scrutinized the way that Duke gets scrutinized, you know what I'm saying, that's Duke and Kentucky. You know what I'm saying? You know, North Carolina, Kansas, they all give them a pass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because if they don't win it, it's just, it just is what it is. But if Duke don't win it or Kentucky don't win it, not to even bring Kentucky in it, I'm just going to keep it all Duke. If Duke don't win it, you know, the fucking sky is falling. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, that's You're just right. how it goes. So, I mean, for somebody to say that, you know, this season was a, was a wash is, like like I said, you definitely need to be drug tested and you probably need a lobotomy. So it's like, <laughs> what, are we, what are we talking about over here? I just Lord. don't understand some people bro like i don't understand some people and, and most yeah. of the people that say stuff like that are people that can't even make a left hand layup don't know ball you know what i'm saying they don't know hoop at all you know what i'm saying they never they don't even bro if you get they ain't worth my goddamn time bottom line Dude, bottom line. successful season i'm very 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 proud of everything that they accomplished you know i wanted to win with a chip you know end the, end the season with a chip it ain't gonna happen. That's all right. You know what I'm saying? It's John Shire's second year, bro. What are we talking about here? He's not some seasoned veteran. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, hey, coach, the, this is second year. Think about what he had to do in his first year. He had to completely rebuild from scratch outside mm -hmm. of Jeremy Roach and obviously Blake's. But Jeremy Roach is the only guy that played meaningful minutes, and he had to rebuild ten other roster spots in his first year at Duke with the expectations that they had. And, that, and then built and, and then, then built then what he Lively, wanted to build. And then built Lively, what he wanted to build and had to deal with injuries. And then Lively and Dariq got injured before the season even tips off. And he has to deal with all of that and put yeah. this thing together. And then this year, as you brought up, um, you know, we weren't able to get the uh the portal five, and then the one five that we did have on this roster um doesn't play more than like a, a handful of minutes and goes out with a season ended injury. Like, and let's keep it let's keep it one hundred too, right? Like I think there's things with this roster. I think like John constructed a damn good roster, right? Yeah. And, and and you see it in the fact that we're 27 and nine throughout all that, all the adversity and everything else. However, like I think with experience, he's going to learn to trust what he built too, because I mean, he built TJ power to be able to fill in if need be. He built Sean Stewart to be able to fill in if need be. Those guys showed capable of doing so. And then down the stretch, he kind of went away from him again. I think, I think a more seasoned coach would have allowed those guys to play a little bit more. I think there's, you know, there's just little things like that. I think John, John would have helped himself out if he trusted what he built more. And you know, he's seeing them in practice where not everything else. He's he's got the vision of how he sees it going. But I think I think as time goes on, you you will learn to to try to kind of trust what you have there because he, I mean, he's built he's built something special and he's built something ready. Can I really quickly just say, you guys want to know how long it took Coach K to have two 27 win seasons? Yeah. 
True. Let them know. Eight years. Yeah. His first 27 win season was 86 when they were 37 and 3 and lost in the yep. championship. The second season was 87 88. They were 28 and 7 and lost in and the that final four. That started the streak of Coach K getting to the final four. It did. You guys get what I'm saying, though, right? Like, Don is, is speed running this. He's mm-hmm. going to be fine. And it's not with K's players, like some people like to say. That was the, you know, no. um, I, I the only K player is Roach. I want to bring up this um, comparison. Uh, because I heard this that they tried to compare John Shire and Ryan Day at Ohio State because Jim Harbaugh had that famous comment that Ryan Day started on third base. Yeah. Which he did because he had all of our Reliance players and yeah. you know all that. John Shire, that was always my point. Is that John Shire had to completely rebuild the entire roster from scratch on his own. You know, he he didn't start with you know the same exact lineup that K had mm-hmm. in in the Final Four in his last year. He yeah. didn't. He had to rebuild the entire thing his way and learn on the job. Like. Uh, Anybody that is calling for his job needs to have their head examined. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. He's gonna make mistakes. He's thirty six, but he will continue to get better. And if we had this, and they did, but back in the day, right? It's well known that back in the day, uh, the Iron Duke wanted to fire Shashesky. Thank God that they the didn't. Concerned listen to him. Iron Dukes, right? Thank God they didn't listen to him. And uh, we shouldn't be listening to the social media warriors and the message board warriors that want to talk about getting rid of John Shire because heaven forbid he put some respect on them TK they, those are experts right right that's, that's true you know I'm sorry that he only had sure. one ACC championship and then the lead eight in his first two years I'm sorry hate to see it those are experts man don't 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 call them those experts it's, it's nah, just, it's wild. nah nah it is wild it's super John's wild. doing his thing like, John, to relax. John is, John's, John's doing, doing a great thing. job yeah, and if there's Seriously. one thing that he did learn, it's like what AC said. Maybe maybe trust some of this development that, that you developed over the season. You know what I'm saying? Because it was too little, too late. But Sean Stewart was actually having an impact against State. But you put him in when when Flip fouled out. Now you have no counter punch. So like Pablo said, State was punching, but Duke couldn't punch back. Mm-hmm. So, so if you trust, if you just trust a little bit of what you have have built, you know, foundationally over the season, with just just Sean Stewart, the, we'll leave TJ out for now. But just Stewart, I mean that that could have been different. I mean Stewart could have had 15 minutes that game, end it with flip on, you know, in without being fouled out with the under four. It it, it could have gone different. I mean, I you know who knows, but. But that's that's the type of thing that I think we'll look back and say he learned from this as a coach. And we also got to remember he's one of the youngest coaches, if not the youngest coach, in NCAA. I mean, he's like my age. The kid's like 36, is he not? Mm-hmm. I think he's 36. Yeah. So it's pretty young to yeah, be running that caliber of program. Hope you follow him. And if you just look at his development as a player and his development as an assistant coach. Like mm-hmm. he continues to learn. He's really smart. Like he's, oh, yeah. You know, and he knows how to relate to these players. Like that, that's, that is a part of the job. And he does it at an exceptional level in year two. Think about how much better he's going to get. And, and he's got a lot of things to improve on, just like all, all we mm-hmm. ask of our players. And, and he'll figure it out. Um, but, you know, I, I do want to move to Duke's future because when the season ends, Obviously, the rumor mill will start, and you know, you already see that there's like 1,300 people in the transfer portal. You know, you got to start wondering. Um, obviously, Duke last year kind of unprecedented in, in today's day and age with not bringing in uh, a single or uh, a single transfer or having one person transfer out. So that's impressive. Um, AC, talk about the future of construction. Where do you? I don't know if you want to make predictions on, on some things yet. Nope. Um, no. but, yeah, I won't make predictions, but I'll say like there's there's going to be a couple things that John wants. I think he's going to want you know, whether it's again, I'm not I'm not making predictions on who's returning or who's going. I am talking about the way you can tell the way John wants this roster constructed. He's got his shot blocker now in Malawatch. 
You've got Cooper Flagg, who is an amazing defender, off-ball defender, on-ball defender, all the above, rebounder, all everything else, just got, at how competitive he is, his positioning, all the other things. He's probably going to be playing the three, man, for real, to be honest. Like, and and then you'll have insane, another man. another rim protecting presence at the four. Hopefully, it's it's a Mark Mitchell or a Sean Stewart type, whoever it may be. We'll have that also that same presence at the four spot. So it, it's not going to be the small backcourt, small guards that you saw us running this season. It's going to be a, a larger lineup that is more versatile. On the bench, you have lots of options. You're going to have shooting off the bench. You're going to have scoring off the bench. You're going to have defending off the bench. There's going to be. I mean, there's it, it's kind of limitless, man. Like. This this team is is constructed in a way there where, once again, like we said before, like throughout the season, at the very least, you'll see nine, ten, maybe even eleven guys play. When it comes down to the tournament, your best seven or eight are going to play. That's how it goes, and it'll, it'll be interesting to see who shakes out into that last seven or eight. But I mean, guys are going to get a chance to develop. They're going to get a chance to play. Yeah, uh, I, I think um, Pablo, I'll go to you because uh, I, I don't want to get this. Um, conversation going down to a path where we're starting to name people um, and, and what they're going to do. But in terms of uh, this being the same as last year in terms of the portal, do you see us bringing anybody in from the portal or do you think it's still too early to, you know, kind of make that decision yet because we don't know who's coming, who's leaving? Uh, I mean, if you do bring somebody, like, to, like let's just talk hypotheticals right now. If you do bring somebody into the portal, like, what type of player do you think we need? I mean, I, I don't think we need anybody. I like, I mean, only thing what they need is what experience. Maybe they want experience, but you're going to get that. Possibly. Do we really need it? You know what I'm saying? Like, do we really need that? Like, every position is covered. Every position that we have is covered. You know what I'm saying? With one or two players, excellent players that probably will play. Mm -hmm. As far as like coming back, I have no idea who's coming back, who's leaving. I have no idea. You know what I mean? I know at least. I feel, well, I don't know anything. I'll say I'll feel comfortable with saying at least two to three players are definitely going to the NBA. And I don't, I, I don't know, man. It's hard to say, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't know nothing about nothing. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I'm just, uh, I, I, without, without saying names, I'm not, I'm not going to put myself on blast for all these Twitter experts without saying any names, two players will transfer at least two players will transfer. At least two mm -hmm. players go to the NBA, if not more, and at mm -hmm. least two players come back. Key key players, not not Jalen Blake's players, but key players. Friend of the podcast, Jalen Blake, we appreciate you. Oh Jesus, but, <laughs> I'm not going to name anybody. <laughs> Jalen Blake's. <laughs> no, no, I'm saying, I'm saying not that. You know, what I'm saying not that type of player who just fills a roster spot like a key yeah, player. Yeah, no, I got you. A key player. I and got you. I can I agree with that. This is like AC said it again. This is what John wanted. This mm -hmm. is John building block by block by block by block mm -hmm. until he may until he reaches the promised land. And that that's the end goal. This is why he was the, the next coach after K right after NIL. This was no accident. This was absolutely calculated and executed to perfection. Just let him cook. Let me let me say something real quick, too. And I think what people have to realize and what they need to understand, like this is, you know, just going back to, you know, prior to the season. Right. John Shire was very clear at saying, you know, he's recruiting certain type of players to stay multiple mm -hmm. years and things like yeah. that. Right. That's something that people can't forget. Everybody's like, oh, this five star and just one and done. We're not even doing all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, he's still that's still gonna happen because this Duke and the yeah. caliber of players that you're gonna get, you're not gonna be able sure. to keep Cooper Flag past one year. You know, you're not right. gonna be able to keep, you know, Common past one year, you know, guys like that. We get it, you know what I'm saying? But other guys, you know, you know, maybe the Con Knipples, maybe the Darren Harris, multi-year players, and those are gonna that's the building block right there, man. And that's gonna be, you know, that's where our experience comes back, you know, our key players come back. You know, just how you saw Flip and everybody come back this year. So it is what it is. Like, that's something to just keep in mind, and people got to understand that, man. So I just mm -hmm. wanted to make that point. It's a great yeah, point I, I, that I don't, I don't yeah, think a I lot think of people realize or, or want to pay attention to. Yep. Yeah, agreed. And I think uh, one thing that over the last basically five, six years of, of pay, it was a revolving door with, you know, guys leaving – into the NBA, whether they were ready or not. And, you know, I think 
through fans were kind of conditioned to thinking that we're going to have that every year. But John kind of saw it in a different way where he wanted to, and he knew the, the difference between Kay and John is that, you know, Kay was 75, 76 years old. You know, John is uh, 40 years younger than, than Kay was. And so he, he knows he's going to be here for a while and he wants to build something now. So you can still get your Cooper flags and your commons, but you're going to build that out with, you know, like you said, Darren Harris's, um, Evans, like all, all these guys, like those guys all, unless something happens crazy, like kind of with, with McCain, like McCain should have been a multi-year guy. He still may be. I was just, I was just he about to say that. Be. But like he, he was recruited to be a multi-year guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Foster was recruited to be a multi-year guy. So you, uh, and that's... Stuart, Stuart the same way, TJ Power, they, they, they were recruited to be here as foundational pieces. And that's something that you saw with Kay. Like, there, there were players that Kay brought in that he expected to be multi-year. Tyus Jones is supposed to be a multi-year guy, man. We And, and yeah. Derek Thornton had to come in earlier than expected because Tyus left. Like, some of, you know, some of those things happened. And I think kind of around that time was kind of when Kay really just – Threw the hat totally in on. I'm coaching guys who are going to be here a year. That's what I can expect, and then I move on with the, the roster the year after that. And he just keeps overturning. He wants to surround himself with NBA level talent and NBA level personality. So that was something he wanted at the end of his career. But I think that's one of the best things he could have done for his successor, because now you still have the brand name to be able to to catch those types of players when you need them. But you're able to still mix it in with your vision of getting multi-year guys and i think i think we as as fans as us analyzing everything i think we need to reframe kind of what we remember from k's era in these last 10 years or so to what we're seeing right now because there is a difference and john has proven there's a difference so far that you know people aren't just gonna vacate his his program especially when needed like the if it's somebody towards the end of the bench that's gonna get replaced okay so be it but if it's somebody that that John really sees a future with, those guys are sticking around and between NIL and and his personality and the way he coaches and, and kids kind of reframing how they're thinking about are they going to make the league right away or not? I think we're in a little bit of a renaissance where you see guys stick around a little bit. Yeah, well, I think we're in a different level of college basketball, too. It, it's of something we've never seen before where you can recruit a top 10 guy as a, as a multi-year player. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is why we have NIL, correct? Yeah. Keep this talent at home kind of thing. Like, it's it's just a very – it's an odd time for college basketball with the transfer portal, with the NIL, with, with all the moving pieces. And you can still recruit a top 15, a top 10, and a McDonald's All-American player that you want for multi-years. It's, it's – yeah. It's a different time. I'm not mad about it. Yeah, I think they also. Um, Jack, I think it needs to be talked about too. I think it's, it's yeah. Well, I guess what I was going to say um, is that I think they also um, you got to give Kay a, a hell of a lot of credit for the basically establishing you know the brotherhood. You know that thing yes. is paying dividends well after the fact that he's gone, and I think yeah. that that really speaks to AC's point that. He just said, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to go get five NBA guys. Because now all those guys are in the NBA, and they talk lovingly of Duke. Mm-hmm. And that's huge, because these players that are you know, growing up, they're they're seeing Jason Tatum as the guy now. They're seeing Zion. They're seeing, Best thing he could have done for the program. 100%. Seriously. Look at Jason. He's absolutely repping Duke. He was at Duke for eight, nine months. He loves Duke. He like he reaches out. He if I'm not mistaken, he presented Paolo. Showed up in Dallas. Yeah. Paolo. Oh yeah. He Paolo, got, Paolo, Paolo gave him the his, uh, award, right? Yeah. yeah. And Paolo gave him presented the Paolo his award. Paolo just presented Coop with his award. Yep. The Gatorade National Player of the Year. Like that's that's something. It's different. It's different. That's something. Like, you got all these guys. Like I remember. Um, Back when Andre Dawkins had his podcast, Nolan Smith came on. He was talking about what he did as director of basketball ops. And he talked about one of the things that was very important to Coach K was keeping tabs on everyone in the program from like Gene Banks to Trey Jones. Mm Because this is like in the 2020 offseason. So like we're talking about like guy on K's first team versus at the time most recent team and always just keeping up with all of them, making sure they have everything they need. 
if they're trying to come to a game, make sure they get tickets behind the bench. Um, if they're in town, just make sure that they can stop by and see Coach K, things like that. That's incredible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like all of that speaks volumes and it shows when you have those another one videos. We've all seen them. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, just seeing like a number of NBA players in that one video go. Like, and it, it's so deep, it's so deep that like they'll do it by position. So, like, if we get oh, a guard, yeah. they'll go with the guard, you know, yeah. montage. If you get a forward, they do the, the, the forward montage. Like, that, that's how deep, you know, the brotherhood actually goes. And it, again, it speaks volumes to what the brand and that K was able to build. And as much as as much as old people want to shit on the TikTok stuff and they wouldn't use that, you know, and, and the trolls and everything else, dude, all, all these young kids seeing seeing Jared McCain succeed on TikTok with Duke in the background and everything else, man. And now Duke has a TikTok and, every, uh, you know, all the all the things they do with social media and stuff like you know, these, these this is that's a part of life now, man. These kids are going to flock to that. And, and, and that's to my guy, Jack, who runs that. Like, he does a fantastic job. Awesome, man. And I, I actually, I want to add on top of that, like, I I sometimes repost, like, some of Jared's TikToks on my Instagram, just, you know, like, it's good engagement, and yeah. honestly, it's it's just, they're fun to watch. I'm not going to sit well, here and act well, like Jack, they're not fun I, to watch. I'm going to say something, and I don't mean this in any sort of hateful, derogatory way. Say like, it. You're, you're the youngest cat on this podcast, so I'm just yes. going to use you in, as an example. People in your generation, your age group, your age demographic, that's what they do, man. Yes. You didn't it you is. didn't grow up without a cell phone. You you've always had a phone. You've all you know what I mean? Like your life is on that phone. Yeah. You really boil it down. So it is like the the grandparents who are shitting on the the TikToks, like they were shitting on the they don't get at, it at the same time. Like they, they don't get it. It's okay. Like it's it's a generational. I don't help Jack. I don't fucking get it. I know. But I don't. <laughs> but I don't hate it either. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, if something is fun for you, if you enjoy doing something fun, and it doesn't hurt you or anybody else around you, then go have fucking fun, man. Yeah. You watch go these videos. Fun. These guys are having fun. Like, and like I was kid, saying, like, like my, I, I, I use my kid as an example. Also, Jack. All yeah. he ever does. Uh, look at this TikTok. Look at this. I don't want to see that damn TikTok. I don't give a fuck. But, but for him and and for that age demographic, that shit's fun. Mm-hmm. So if you like it to is. dance, then dance, bro. Fuck exactly. It. Like I, I'm posting these, I'm getting. Enga- I have like two of my three most viewed videos of all time that I posted on that page, and I've been posting videos for almost ten years on there. Are Jared McCain TikToks? Since I started posting these Jared McCain TikToks occasionally, I am up ten thousand followers. Is my highest increase in a single season ever. This stuff works on people my in Until my generation. Like, <laughs> come on now, seriously. Well, like, this stuff is huge for Duke for recruiting, for branding. Like, this is. It is. No, you're not wrong, Jack. You're not wrong. Keep, keep going, Jack. Keep going, Jack. Keep going, Jack. <laughs> I'm putting the theme music on while you're running, man. <laughs> yeah, it's important. This is an no incredibly disrespect. important thing. No disrespect. Like people are making fun. People are making fun of it. Like people are making fun of it. Okay, yeah, they are. But I, I wasn't. I was saying they don't I understand why you like it. I don't understand it. I know you understand why you like it. People are making fun of it. Guess what? That's still engagement. That still boosts it and gets more people to see it. I won't make fun of it. Because also, to the people who are doing that with our podcast, I was say, saying, all, all the UNC point. fans that made it to minute number forty-nine, we, we see you. you. We see you. Thank <laughs> you for helping us get paid. <laughs> we thank you. But but that that really kind of brings it full circle, right? Is that that it doesn't matter what it is at this point with Duke is you're going to get the hate. You're going to get hate, more hate, and hate, and more hate. That's just that's the nature of the, uh, of the beast that we live in, and the the fact that we are the standard. We're and we have the perfect team coming in for it next season. Yeah. Oh, Those God, dudes coming in next year with the the if attitudes they have. Yeah. Ooh. See Coop in a TikTok. I want to see Coop in a TikTok, dude. If you want to talk yeah. about engagement gonna, next year, Cooper Flag and... puts Cooper Flag puts pork in his collard greens. That's all I got to say. 
Oh, 100. 100. I, th- I think we're going to see a, a transition to slowly, but not necessarily fully. Like Coach K was a bully when he needed to be, mm-hmm. a friend when he needed to be, you know, ex- uh, name the different titles that he was, right? And yeah. <clears throat> part of growing as a coach and a person is knowing how to uplift, motivate, treat others. But you, not everybody, like I use football a lot because like there's players that I used to be able to grab by the face mask. You know what I'm saying? But I need you to make a mother can play right now, dude. Like stop being a pussy. Go get them. And then there's players where you got to put your arm around them. Hey, you did really good, man. When you cut, when you pulled on that block, you know, you, you got them square under the shoulder pads. That was really good. Next step in that evolution, you just got to keep going downfield. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like there, there's different types of motivation, and I think we're going to see that from John Shire. We're gonna we're gonna hear the stories of him getting loud and kicking something over in the locker room once or twice just to make a damn point. Because sometimes you have to, and that might motivate somebody, but not everybody. And is it the kid? Is it the kid, or is it the person that's trying to motivate him? It's the kid. That's that's more important. I think that uh, any motivate uh, distinction. The motivating is it. the most important. Uh, you got to want to be motivated. What's your, what's, what's your question, Pablo? The receiver. So, so, right. So, like, let's say, like, we just talk about style, like, style, stylistic clashes, right? Like, Coach K versus how John Shire does things, right? I don't think there's not a kid in America that Coach K can't talk to the way he want to talk to him, scream at him, cuss at him, whatever. I think he can do that to any kid and motivate him. That's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? So, sometimes I don't think it's. It's not even about the kid. It's, I think it's about the person that's delivering the message sometimes. I, I don't. That's all I'm saying. I, I'm not going to sit here like I don't think Coach K hasn't put his arm around a player before. Like oh, that's, he ha- there, there's has. no way that you, can, that, that you only get cussed at by Coach K. Bullshit. Yeah, but some, of the, things that. That, some of the things that we uh, know my, of later. In, sorry, D, go ahead. No, I was just saying my point was a, a good coach learns how to motivate differently. And yeah. it could be a player by player situation. It could be a team by team situation. Um, you know, you could show ass in front of the team and then individually be like, hey, listen, I still care about you. I love you to death. I'll do anything for you, but I need you to perform situation. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but there's, there's a lot of factors. And with some of those factors comes the clout that you earn. Like, coach, like, you're talking about Coach K at the end of his career, there's a little more clout there than was at the beginning of his career. Like, sure. nobody thought Coach K is getting you to the league in his first seven seasons at Duke. No. But then you start Fair putting point. more pros out. You start winning championships. And Johnny like Dawkins that. happens. Right. You start, you start building, you start building, you start building clout for yourself. I think John, like, in, in year two, his personality is so great for what he's doing. I don't think he, you know, the kicking and screaming thing might work sometimes if he needs to because – you know, he starts yelling and stuff. All of a sudden, they're gonna be like, "Oh snap!" You know, coach is serious or whatever. But I think he, I think these guys respect him. I think that's the biggest thing is that because he's so real with them, that's he's so word. honest with sure. everybody. They they respect sure. him. They respect but, him, and and he he gets. I think it's t- this season you saw he gets the most out of the guys that he could possibly get out of him in that moment. Like I think the guys this season were dealing with a little bit of uh, some stuff, injuries, things like that throughout the year. So, you know, it, it was a difficult year, but you see how we pushed through it. And you see what like, John was still able to get them motivated and still get able to get put a good product on the court. That might be a better word than motivation, because if you respect somebody and they're asking you to do something like for, the, you know, yeah. the great good of the name you're wearing on your shirt, mm-hmm. you are motivated. So, I, I yeah, I, I agree. Respect is a better word. And yes, correct. Yeah, I think all the guys, obviously, especially after after the NC State loss, um, you know, Jeremy Roach put it perfectly that it's not easy to for for people to think that it's easy for John Shire to come in after replacing the goat mm-hmm. and then just have all this instant success. And the amount of respect that he had for John Shire and everything that John Shire did for him. And that when he was recruiting him even as an assistant coach, you know, Jeremy Roach gets hurt. And he stands by there and says, no, you're still our guy. You know, and to show that kind of stuff. And, and, and John had to recruit him again after sophomore year. Jeremy Roach was leaving. And he was able to re-recruit Jeremy Roach and get him to come back. And without that kind of respect, usually, that doesn't happen. And so 
John Shower is on a great track record now. Uh, track record right now. He's going to continue that. Jerry McCain talked about it, about how he knows that John understands that he can be coached hard, and that's that, that's that's important. Like if you know your personnel, you know who you can coach. You know, like an explainer, and you know you know who you have to kind of maybe coddle or or point out things in a different way, just like you talked about. Me. So, but you know, John's going to continue to improve, and the best part for him is that he has the greatest sports motivator of all time. The floor above him. Mm-hmm. And you can talk to him any day, any time of day, and learn, continue to learn from him about motivation and, and, and leadership. And that will only continue to propel John and, and help him improve. Duke's he's gonna, also not looking over his shoulder for his job either. Right. No, he's, I wouldn't he's, I wouldn't trade good. our place as a program for any other one in the country. Fuck no. I've, Fuck I've heard no. analysts like Look, Matt Norlander, I, I respect Matt Lor- Norlander, Iowa College Basketball Podcast, the day after or the same night as the loss at NC State. He was, you know, very vaguely trying to imply that, like, Purdue was in a better, in, even NC State was in a better direction as a program than Duke. It's like, oh, he was going to get fired if oh, McCall doesn't hit that three against him. Huh? Right, stop. Oh, sorry. Duke stop. is getting Cooper flag next year. And that's yeah. not even the only top three NBA draft prospect they're getting. We'll yeah. take that over anyone. Come on. Agreed. Come on. But, but Agreed. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit here and and let this thing end on a on a negative note for this season. We got a lot of shit going our way right now. We got a lot of moving parts coming forward here in the next couple of weeks. We're gonna see who comes back. We're gonna see who the parts and and you know we'll rebound and, and we'll be back. And next year. If you thought the Zion year was crazy, next year is going to be off the charts crazy. So, you said this at the end of our last podcast. If you aren't on the train, the train's on and left the station, and that even includes next year. No more. No more. We're already gone. So, don't try to... When we're, when we're dominating people by 30 next year, the train's full. But we'll be here all summer. The train keeps moving for the Five Point Play podcast. I was going to say the Five Point Play podcast train is not full. Let's go, everybody! Get yeah, on board. On this we ain't going nowhere. But we got a lot of in the Patreon because you're gonna miss it in the off season if you don't. Yeah, tell, tell them about we're the gonna, Patreon. We're gonna have shows that are Patreon only. We're gonna have we have discussions that are, are Patreon and premium only over on the Discord. Um, the only way to get on the Discord is to be a Patreon member. Land y'all just. Make sure y'all uh, make sure y'all sign up because, like you said, the train's rolling, baby. Choo choo. The movement is moving. As right, always, well, let's go Duke. Let's, let's go, Duke. go Duke. Let's go Duke forever Duke. and always.